Thank you for staying with us. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigeria newspapers. And I begin with uh, the blueprint. The major story here, plot you attacks gets bloodier. Eight months old, 22 others killed. Uh, troops recover rifles. Uh, Biram youth, Magban trade blames. Reps advocate self-defense. Uh, JNI urges caution. You find the details on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. And to the front page of the Daily Trust now. Arewa Consultatives Forum, JNI, Christian Association of Nigeria, condemn plot to killings. And uh, some writers here, eighth month uh, baby, uh, seven others killed in fresh attack. Warring communities give conditions for peace. To the front page of the Nigeria News Direct now. Internal crisis at a moon meets with party chairman to quell rifts, unite party. Internal crisis at a moon meets with party chairman to quell rifts, uh, unite party. That's on the front page of the Nigeria News uh, Direct. We move now to this Nigeria newspaper. Buhari's government most corrupt, says Kuka. A federal lawmaker's huge pay unconstitutional, immoral, says Obasanjo. Afe Babalola clock 60 at bar warns serving judges against presiding in election petitions tribunal. Uh, you find all this story on the front page of this Nigeria newspaper. Well, we move now to the front page of uh, the Vanguard. Corruption's ugliest phase was under Buhari, says Kuka. Vanguard, corruption's ugliest phase was under Buhari, says Kuka. All the details on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. And to the leadership newspaper, State of the Nation, Kuka Falano asks Tinubu to lead anti-corruption crusade. Say President must tackle menace for better Nigeria. And another writer here, again, Obasanjo hits lawmakers over jumbo pay, Mike. Okay, I have the Daily Trust here. Daily Trust says, Tears, sorrow in Abuja as FCTA demolishes over 100 buildings. All right? The Daily Times is what we're doing right now. Daily Times. Okay, Daily Times says, Tears, sorrow in Abuja as FCTA demolishes over 100 buildings. All right, that's what Daily Times has there. From there, let's go to Daily Independent. Daily Independent uh, says that the $3.2 billion uh, customs project seen plunging Nigeria into debt trap. $3.2 billion customs project seen plunging Nigeria into debt trap. Okay, that's what Daily Independent has. The Punch newspaper is where we're going next. Punch. Punch says fuel smuggling persists in borders despite subsidy removal. Customs boss is uh, revealing this. Fuel, fuel smuggling persists in borders despite a subsidy removal. That's uh, Customs boss saying that that's on, on the Punch newspaper. The Nation newspaper is saying 800,000 liters vessel with uh, stolen crude intercepted and destroyed. 800,000 liters vessel with stolen crude intercepted and destroyed. And in PCL security raises bar in crude theft battle, okay? NNPCL security raises bar in crude oil theft battle. That's what the nation newspaper has. The Guardian is next. The Guardian newspaper. Nigeria flares $3.9 billion gas in four years amid pollution revenue leakage concerns. Nigeria flares $3.9 billion uh, gas in four years amid pollution revenue leakage concerns. That is what you see on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. The Business AM is next. Business AM says uh, uh, OT, uh, geometric AFTA, that's the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement combo, raises expectations over about manufacturing. Okay, that's uh, what's coming out from Abia State. Okay, from there, let's go to Business Day. Business Day says investors reap big on 
2016 large cap stocks bet. Okay, investors reap big on 2016 large cap stocks bet. Bet. Okay, all that uh, you know stock and technical business technical issues in there. All right, Veronica, that's what we have. Okay, Mike, let's look at um, the Bishop of Catholic Diocese of Sokoto, Matthew Hassan Kuka, who is speaking again, mm. not in letters, but in... <laughs> <laughs> no, but he has been speaking. He has been speaking, yeah. but this time not letters now. <laughs> exactly. as his I usual know, way. Of course, of course. Uh, now, we yeah. see that on some of the papers, on the front page of leadership is there, on the front page of uh, Vanguard, you find all of these stories now. He was speaking at uh, the 60th call to bar anniversary of Are Afe Babalola, and uh, uh, other legal luminaries and dignitaries were present. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bishop Kuka, in his usual style, said that um, the worst, worst phase of corruption under, uh, was under the last administration of President uh, Muhammadu Buhari. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also lamented the fact that uh, the country currently shared its sovereignty uh, with bandits and uh, terrorists, and uh, especially in the view of uh, pervasive insecurity in the countries. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about insecurity issues. And uh, not only him uh, spoke, uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, also spoke, and uh, he told uh, the president that uh, he shouldn't send wrong signals in his anti-corruption fight. That he should lead uh, from the front, basically, especially with regards to the matters of uh, addressing looting. Mm. Let me stop there. Well, the the Bishop Kuka is, is is a Nigerian that a lot of people respect around the world, mm -hmm. and all the books he has written on democracy, on leadership, and all of that are books that everyone likes to read because his perspective, mm -hmm. his depth of understanding of these things help to uh, create way forward and knowledge base for people and so on. When he speaks, a lot of people listen to him mm. because he's, he, he touches, he strikes the chords at the right place and at the right times. Mm. It's just that somebody like him, he's a clergyman, so he can't be in politics the way that uh, others would expect him. Otherwise, he would make an amazing leader from the well, understanding. clergymen yeah, but, who have well, become the, the, politicians. Well, yeah, but the Catholic, the Catholic institution is, uh, you know, they don't mix partisan politics like that. Recall the governor of... Um, uh, Benue State, State. Yeah. Who, uh, who, is, who is a Catholic priest. You mm. recall when he was going into this, uh, he was, there was a report that he was suspended from the mm. church, you know, and so on. So, but the issue there is, coming to the real issue, mm. Father Kuka had mentioned this issue before. He has yeah. written letters, he had written publications around this issue of corruption, drawing attention of former President Buhari to the issues of corruption, the, the need to fight it, the need to, to uh, make an example of those who are dragging his name in the mud. Because we all understood the man, Muhammadu Buhari, the man, not the president now, but the man, Muhammadu Buhari, we all know how his personal philosophy his contentment, his, his, his no-nonsense disposition to all of these things. Mm -hmm. And but that was one of his mantras. Exactly. At the time. And that was even one of the reasons why Nigerians went out in mass to vote for, for him. him. Because they know that when it comes to anti-corruption, when it comes to my word is my bond, all of those features, he has them. Mm. You know. So, however, being in leadership, we, ha we had the president, the former president at the time say, well, age is not on my side and the age was not uh, fair to me. I would have acted the way I, I acted before in some areas mm -hmm. and all of that. But however, the moment you become the president, you are the god of that country for that time. Because the government is on your shoulders for that time and Nigerians expect you that build powers. you have the authority, mm -hmm. you have the coercive resources, you have every information to thwart 
corruption, to stamp out corruption anyhow that you should. Mm. Especially when there are laid down procedures, there are laid down standards on how to fight corruption in Nigeria. We have the EFCC, we have the ICPC. So when reports are brought to you, what do you do about it? You know, so that's where uh, 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 Bishop Kuka is coming, coming from. from. Because he has seen that. Of course, there were, there were reports. In fact, the media was awash with a lot of reports. I can't begin to, you know, name Even the all president of himself confirmed at some point no, of course. how corruption was, exactly. you know, being manifested by even some state governors. Very good. So, so the point there is, we didn't see, as much as fighting corruption was one of the three cardinal points or agenda of, of uh, former President Buhari, but we didn't see that vehemence in the fight against corruption in the way that Nigerians expected it to be. Mm. So, of course, that is not to say he didn't try. Of course, there were prosecutions. EFCC and ICPC prosecuted some persons, you know, and all of that. But recall, one of it that Nigerians will not forget is when the government came to say that, or came out to say that, there were about 400 persons who were sponsoring Boko Haram mm. were identified. To today, nobody saw the list of that. Okay, fine. Even if you don't give us the list, it's fine. But were there prosecutions? We didn't hear of any prosecutions, as the case may be. So, where did that go? It just fizzled out. It was under for, uh, former President Obasanjo, sorry, former President Buhari, hmm. that the, 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 the massive stealing of crude oil was unveiled, where we saw siphoning of crude oil from uh, uh, pipelines into the, and even uh, vessels. Into the, yeah, into the sea, as the case may be. Till today, nobody was arrested. We didn't hear, oh, these were the persons who were behind it. But the point there is, if the government wants to find out, government will. Because they have the information, they have the wherewithal, they have the resources to determine who did what and at what time. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't see, that is why the bishop was calling on, on Tinubu. Well, the point there is, so far, in your, your predecessor, we didn't see that fight, that mm. vehemence. We didn't see that urgency to fight corruption the way that it was mouthed. Let you oh, Nigerians were having uh, too high an expectation. Perhaps. No, of course, Nigerians are not. In fact, Nigerians' expectation is okay. Mm. The only thing is that Nigerians have been disappointed. They have been heartbroken over and over and over and over and over again. Mm. So Nigerians, if, when they become skeptical, recall we've even said it here before, if Nigerians are skeptical about government policies, you won't blame them. Yes. Because they have hoped. Recall in 2015, when President Buhari came in, it was like the Messiah has come. Mm -hmm. It was like the Holy Prophet Muhammad has become the president of Nigeria now, or maybe Jesus Christ as the case may be, hoping that that magic wand has finally come in the passing of uh, former President Buhari. And that was what Nigerians expected. And in the but past six months, we, we saw some, some semblance. People, there, there was a default. There was, there was, a de there, was, there was things started working by default. Yes. Where and then after six from months. electricity to, to traffic to everything, everything started working the way it was supposed to. Nigerians just decided to whip themselves into line. Mm. But when they saw that, okay, this it may not the be... The body language. Yeah, body language is too flat. Yeah. Yeah, maybe... It may not be 1984, where the, the man in 1984 may not be the same person. Mm. Yeah, of course, we didn't expect to see, to see the man in 1984 in the same way because this is democracy. Yeah. This is not military. But the point there is that that stance against making, making your statement clear against issues that you don't want, making it very, very uh, 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 creating a straight line as to what you want and what you Being don't circumspect. want and so on, when they didn't see that, Everything mm. fell back to what it used to be. So the point there is that, that is why Nigerians, uh, uh, Bishop Kuka is saying, mm, we don't want to have this same situation anymore. Again. For once, let Nigerians, let, let, let Nigerians smile from the expectations that they have. Let it be met, at least for once. That is what Nigerians are saying. Mm. Because the point there is that, it is security, this corruption has... A, there was an, a whistleblower issue here. You recall the issue, the, the whistle, whistleblower uh, policy, uh, policy yeah. where Nigerians started, we started seeing whistleblowers were coming up here and there. 
boasting different things. What happened to them? Mm. We didn't really get to hear of a prosecution. Accountability from was the major challenge. Recall TSC. Yes. Uh, uh, under uh, President Buhari, in fact, it was said that with TSA, ah, That's everything a... will become. <laughs> Treasury well, central account, if yes. If you remove what, 10 Kobo from government treasury, can be traced. everybody can be traced. from the president will receive a lot, mm. Minister of Finance will receive a lot, CBM governor will receive a lot. So everybody knows. How money, how money goes in and how money comes out of government uh, 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 account because everything was going to be unified. Eventually, we, we got to know that there were some government agencies that, that were exceptions to right. the TSA, mm. you know, and so on. So by the time that happened and then it continued like that and then, oh, some, some agencies came that they cannot be part of TSA mm -hmm. and so on. So the point there is, Fighting corruption, we know that is really dangerous. Yes. Recall the book by uh, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, where she said <laughs> that fighting corruption is dangerous, and which is, which is true. But the point there is, government is the one that can fight it. It is not me and you that yeah. work with people uh, on and, daily basis. And it they is the want, government yes. that can do that. And, and they want this current administration to lead this anti-corruption crusade. And some by have example, said that... Yes, with the removal of fuel subsidy, the statements that came from the president, it is obviously a direction that a lot of Nigerians want the government to go, even though they're feeling, okay, there has to be some cushioning to the effect of that. Um, and also the matter of the fact that some Nigerians were, you know, sucking Nigeria dry with regards to this matter of fuel subsidy. That is why the, the government decided to pull the plug out of that, which is a direction, some have said, is a good one in terms of fighting corruption with regards to that aspect. Then he also spoke with regards to the matter of uh, oil theft. He has issued a statement saying, go after these persons, and we are waiting to see results uh, out of that. So perhaps uh, the, the president has begun. Building on it is what Nigerians want to see, especially with regards to his cabinet. Those he will put in, ensuring that they deliver, and they deliver on the promises he has decided to, for Nigerians, talking about uh, the renewed hope agenda and how they can also fight corruption as well. Nigerians are looking forward to that. We saw the removal of uh, the, um, the corruption man, Abdul Rashid Bawa, as well. We saw that he was removed, asked to step aside because they needed to suspended. investigate, suspended rather, to investigate him. We've seen also the CBN governor asked to step aside and suspended as well. So we've seen some moves by the president, mm -hmm. and we hope to see more in the coming days to addressing this matter of corruption. We yeah. have to leave the conversation okay. here, we have to unfortunately, leave here. because yeah. I see that you have so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is an issue that Nigerians really, it is very dear to the heart of Nigerians. So Absolutely, because they are feeling the brunt, course, yeah. right? Yeah. And we hope to see some level of accountability at the end of the day.